and welcome back to the Fortitude Fix. I hope you're well. My name is Deshauna and in today's video I'm going to be talking to you all about my fibroids. So this is going to be a video where I just sit down and I'm honest with you. I share a little bit of education. You know you can't take the educator <laughs> out of the video but I'm also going to be sharing my story living with uterine fibroids not just living with uterine fibroids but being pregnant with them and i think it's very important to discuss and talk about so i just wanted to add my two cents add my video to the plethora that is youtube for those who might stumble across it and find it useful if you have not yet subscribed to this channel please go ahead and click that subscribe button down below i would love to have you be a part of the fam before we get into it I happy 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 sickle cell awareness month september is sickle cell awareness month and if you do not know i am pregnant right now i am 38 weeks pregnant almost 39 weeks with sickle cell i do have sickle cell disease type sc hemoglobin and i've been documenting my pregnancy this entire time so if you're interested in getting caught up i have a ton of pregnancy and mommy ish related videos and i have my pregnancy updates my weekly pregnancy updates i will go ahead and link those right here for you if you want to go ahead and watch those i started literally from the moment i found out i was pregnant up until here we are 38 weeks so happy sickle cell awareness month to any of you out there who may have the disease may know somebody who has it has the trait have children who have it or if you don't this is a wonderful time to educate yourself and learn more about it i wanted to also shout out a really cool etsy shop where i got this necklace from so this if you all can see it's kind of like a little vial and it has circular red blood cells in it and it also has sickled red blood cells in it. So let's see if you can see. So sickle cell disease is basically some of your red blood cells look like donuts and other ones look like the gardening tool, a sickle or like a banana shape and it makes it really hard to go down the bloodstream they become sticky they can cause a lot of other issues and something known as a sickle cell crisis so be sure to check down in the description box I will link some information for you if you would love to learn more about sickle cell disease but let's go ahead and get into the video first off I just want to start by sharing what fibroids are so they are also known as uterine fibroids or uterine myomas they're also known as, as leomyomas and they can range anywhere from a pebble size to a football size so yeah there's great range within <laughs> the fibroid world they are non-cancerous growths in or outside of the uterus and these can develop during childbearing years for those who were born with a uterus the cause of them really is still unknown but there are some risk factors and so those risk factors include things like family history of them obesity early onset of puberty and essentially some of the symptoms include things like having really heavy or painful menstrual periods having prolonged periods so periods that last quite a while pelvic pain and just like with a lot of health conditions no symptoms at all person doesn't sometimes even know that they have uterine fibroids until they have a very first ultrasound and typically someone's not having an ultrasound of their uterus unless they are pregnant there are other cases of course in extenuating circumstances where someone might have a ultrasound before they are pregnant and i was one of them i remember actually it, i think it was 2015 i was meeting with my OBGYN and she felt something so she wanted me to do an ultrasound she thought or suspected that there were like polyps or something on my ovary so she wanted to have an ultrasound done to take a look so in 2015 i had a transvaginal ultrasound where they use the wand that goes inside and i was told nothing to be worried about um that they did find 
very 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 small fibroids not a big deal i think they said they did find two and i shouldn't worry so in 2015 at that point i wasn't married i wasn't thinking about marriage i wasn't like wanting to become pregnant at that point so i didn't i really thought nothing of it i thought nothing of it until i became pregnant and had my first ultrasound wowza my ultrasound technician looked and was like wow there's there's a fibroid did you know you had a fibroid and i was like no i know what and i'm thinking like what is this like is it going to affect the baby is it going to affect the pregnancy and i was just shocked and it took me a while so after the appointment i was driving home and i was like did i know that i have a fight like is this something that I was told? So I was able to look back into my records and I found the email that said, this is what we found, very, very small fibroids, nothing to worry about. So I let the doctor know on my next visit that I did know I had just forgotten. And the one of the reasons why I didn't remember is because they said they were very, very small. But when I had my first ultrasound, one of them was measuring almost 12 centimeters, almost 12 centimeters. And I was like, shocked because if you know what 12 centimeters is like you're dilated when you give birth to about 10 centimeters my fibroid was bigger than that and so i was kind of freaking out i talked to my mom about it and she was like oh yeah you know i have them too i i was like what like i i was just shocked so essentially i guess they run in my family it's a thing so in my case my fibroids are on the outside of my uterus so they are not causing any problems to me or to my pregnancy also i was asked by the technician if i had like really horrible periods or really like heavy periods and my answer was no my periods would last literally three to four days and they would start and stop right on time and the cramps i guess over the years i felt get stronger but it wasn't to the point where i was taking a ton of medicine or that i couldn't get out of bed i do want to stop here and mention that african-american women black women such as myself are affected by uterine fibroids at disproportionate rates in consideration to other ethnicities so black women compared to their white counterparts are two to three times more likely to develop uterine fibroids we are also more likely to receive some sort of invasive treatment to either remove or treat them we as black women tend to develop them earlier and i think based on my knowledge as a health educator it might have something to do with the age of onset of puberty in young black women as well black women their fibroids tend to be larger they tend to have more in number so as black women we are more likely to have more severe symptoms due to the fibroids and 25 percent of black women age 18 to 30 have fibroids compared to only seven percent of white women and once that black woman reaches age 35 that 25 percent actually increases to 60 percent i'll go ahead and link an article that was ran earlier this year by the new york times that kind of really talks about this as well as some other information about fibroids if you're interested in learning so as previously mentioned i had tiny fibroids they grew from 2015 to 2020 there's numerous reasons as to why that was but again almost 12 centimeters while pregnant it could have grown during pregnancy and i just didn't know it could have grown before that within that five year period anyway just normally however during pregnancy they wanted to keep an eye on it so if you've been watching my channel for a while you've noticed that i probably have had more ultrasounds than typical and that's because they wanted to keep me under very close surveillance to make sure that the fibroid wasn't growing or hindering anything as i sit here today i am 38 weeks pregnant and i had my 38 week ultrasound a couple of days ago my fibroid is now 18 centimeters and it's been that way for about half my pregnancy it may have grown in size just because literally my uterus is growing in size it is not affecting the growth of our daughter. It is actually on the outside. So the very first fibroid, the big one that we've been keeping an eye on is on my top left side. So right here, and I'm able to feel it. <laughs> 
because it's growing outwards, right? And it's not impacting the uterus, which is good. My second fibroid is actually on the bottom of my uterus, still on the outside, but on my right side. So top left, bottom right are where my two fibroids are on the outside of my uterus. They wanted to keep an eye on the bottom right to make sure that it wasn't going to cover my cervix and make it so I had to have a c-section. It is not covering my cervix. They barely even mention it. It is a lot smaller than the other one and it is not causing any problems to my pregnancy or to my baby. Because I have the fibroid, the big one, the 18 centimeter one, they do not want me to have a c-section. They are really wanting me to have a vaginal delivery and part of that is because of the type of fibroid that I have also the fact that I have sickle cell so the risk of infection skyrockets from general cesarean section to general cesarean section plus someone with sickle cell to then general cesarean section to someone with sickle cell to someone who has a really large fibroid as well that's what's happening in my case Again, if it were to happen, they would be, you know, take the necessary precautions, but I myself am also hoping for a vaginal delivery. If you watched my latest video, the one right before this one, I'll link it right here. It was my 38 week prenatal doctor's appointment. And so I wanted to put that up because again, baby can come any day now. She is due on September 16th, but we are officially on baby watch. So in that video, I decided to leave in the clip that shows my doctor showing the fibroid on the ultrasound. And she basically says, there's your fibroid, and then it cuts <laughs> to something else. And then in the car, when I'm debriefing, I talk to you a little bit about what the doctor said about my fibroid. What I didn't show you is the footage of the fibroid itself that you can see from the outside. <laughs> so I'm gonna insert a couple of pictures here, as well as some of that footage from that original ultrasound that kind of shows like, how big the fibroid is really and what it looks like on the inside and the outside so i'm going to go ahead and insert that video as well as those pictures right here fibroid is here yeah this it's really big is gigantic i know 18 is it 18 centimeter no millimeter Centimeters? Centimeter. 18 centimeters. Oh my goodness. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this is your fibroid here. Oh my God. It's so big. And it's not hindering like her growth or anything. No, no, no. Because it's outside the uterus. Or outside the uterus. Oh. So, uh, it looked bigger, but it's not compressing on your baby. Got it. So the good thing, position-wise, it's actually in a favorable location. Okay. All right, so there you have it. That's what my fibroids look like. That's what the big 18 centimeter one looks like. It might actually shrink back to that 11 or even smaller after I give birth. So I will make sure to make an update video. If you're interested in seeing kind of this journey and what happens now, <laughs> go ahead and make sure you're subscribed and leave a comment down below if you're interested, if you want me to do like a part two or like an update after pregnancy and I will make sure to do that and get that filmed for you all. There are some people who are pregnant who have fibroids in the inside of their uterus and that can actually cause issues. I actually do know a friend of mine had to be hospitalized because her fibroids were inside her uterus and they were causing her to have contractions and it was way, way too early to deliver baby. So they admitted her to the hospital to keep an eye on it, to try to stop the contractions. And that's just one example. There can also be the fact that it might rupture or that it might hinder baby's growth or that they might need to remove it for after pregnancy, something like that. In my case, again, they were on the outside. And I even asked, I said, like, for baby number two, do I need to have this removed? And they're like, no, if it's not causing any problems, like you don't need to have it removed. Okay, but for me, I'm, I'm also like, it's not causing any problems for this pregnancy, but could it potentially cause problems for the next one? And 
that's just something that I have to personally keep an eye on with my care team and if you yourself have fibroids if you uh, have a family history of fibroids you may or may not know that you have them until you have an ultrasound but if you do have a family history i would tell my doctor so tell your doctor that you do have a family history of that so that they can look out for them and keep an eye on them or if you were to become pregnant i just wanted to make this video to share a little bit of education to share my story i hadn't talked about my pregnancy with fibroids here on this channel at all and it isn't because i am embarrassed by it or that it's hindering my health or baby's health. It's literally that I just didn't know what to say and I didn't want it to come off as something scary uh, because they are so common, especially for black women. So I wanted to get the information that I could and then share it with you all. And I hope that it is helpful. I hope that you all learn something and I hope that you all will check out the links down below in the description box so that you can learn a little bit more about sickle cell disease as well as uterine fibroids. Thank you all so, so much for watching. Oh my gosh, I appreciate it so much. I recently made it to a thousand subscribers here on this channel. And if you have not subscribed yet, go ahead and click that subscribe button and be a part of the fam. I would love to have you here. We have so much fun. <laughs> We're having so much fun over here and I can't wait to introduce you to baby girl when she arrives. And I will see you right back here in my next video. As always, remember to fill your cup. Bye.